Hello ladies and metal chain and welcome to another replay cast. Today we are looking at the game in the WZ11114, the Chinese tier 9 heavy tank playing on Cliff uh, tier 10 the game. So of those of you who are always like, you always show games where you're top tier. Well this ain't one of them. Uh, so there we go. And there is one piece of shit in each team playing artillery as well. So not a typical setup for a good game, but the cliff is pretty, pretty forgiving when it comes down to getting positions where you can still play the game while remaining already safe. Uh, in comparison to some other maps, this is this is pretty easy to find uh, good positions here. And now first shot, bulldog climbing here. One important thing when you shoot this, you always want to get the outline before you start shooting. You never want to shoot over a bridge like that without having an outline. Uh, usually you won't have this much time to, to look at the enemy before shooting him, so it's always nice to try to get the outline on this gun before you pull the trigger. And now relocating to the RD safe position I was talking about, that was really close of hitting him, just skimmed over the top of uh, his hull there. And now uh, taking this position here, it's extremely good because it is RD safe and it is hull down and you can shoot everybody who wants to cross here easily as well. To sum up the uh, WZ11114, it is like a mix bef between an ESN E5 and an IS8. You pretty much get the gun of the ESN E5. It is really similar to that. Uh, kind of similar to the IS7's gun now as well after the IS7 got buffed. But uh, the gun is solid. The reload is pretty decent. It's like 11 seconds or so. And uh, you hit for 490 alpha damage. The pen is not the highest at the tier, but it is good enough. And then you get a pretty good upper hull uh, combined with a pretty good turret. The turret has weak spots on the top, obviously the cupolas, and you also have some other weak spots there. Uh, uh, like the cheeks can uh, ricochet shots into your hull and shit like that can happen. I didn't expect to pan that shot on the mouse, but somehow I did. That was the turret uh, kind of angled as well, so I was actually really surprised to see that. I pen that. The bad things about the tank, it catches on fire frontally, it gets ammo wreck frontally uh, because, you know, made in China. It's funny when Chinese things break because they're made in China, you know, not like everything is made in China, but hey. Uh, then you have a uh, rather long, the tank is rather long, so it's kind of awkward sometimes to take cover with it, but that's not really a bad thing and, uh, well, it is a bad thing. The good thing though is that the turret is mounted at the front, which makes the tank really good at peeking and peekabooing, and this is quite amazing that this light tank got away with it. We had two Yak Panzers camping that fucking road the entire game, and they still let that fucking light tank leave. That is uh, pretty impressive, I would say. But my game has started reasonably well, 2.4k damage completely for free, a bit of a, uh, some lucky shots, but uh, overall I missed some as well, so it could have been better, could have obviously been worse. And now the mouse, uh, I mean his position is pretty terrible, I'll try to aim the shot as much as I can before he leaves and we get another 403 damage added to the total of now almost 3k. And now I'm being shot by an Amex CDC and a T-54 Lightweight. The Lightweight actually manages to pen me. I guess he caught my side or something. And I catch. Uh, I didn't uh, hit my shot like I wanted to and only tracked him. And now it's time to kind of relocate. I should go after that mouse because he's gonna fuck our team over if I don't go and kill him. And for me it would be a pretty nice chunk of damage to do as well. I'm, it should be pretty much for free. I'm a bit worried about being shot by RD as I am being spotted in the middle of the open for quite a while, but uh, it does not happen just yet. Now the thing is, I'm not actually sure how well the f uh, fuckers on my right will be able to see me. You take an unnamed shot at the mouse because he was going away and I didn't really have a chance to hit him anyways. Uh, so, uh, well, I didn't have a chance if I aimed. Uh, now I take the CDC shot. I'm uh, gonna hang around to shoot him back if I can. And I do nail the shot. I do get uh, splashed by Artie as well and now it's time to uh, go for the mouse. One thing to note is that they still have two IS-4s on full health and they will be on full health for quite a while still. Now the back of the mouse uh, shoot on the move because you know reasons and esports and, and things. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, shooting once, I'm gonna get the second shot most likely as well as it is a bit unlikely that those guys will pay attention to him. And I do get to pick up the kill which is very nice for me and now... Uh, just judging by the situation, I probably want to fuck with that CDC and the uh, other dude that was there, the lightweight, and there he is. Sadly, our T69 was not the greatest uh, player ever uh, seen driving a T69. I do track fucking lightweight once again because, you know, Russian side armor and things. 
A 69 cannot pick up the kill on the for a lightweight, so he shouldn't even go in for that, but he still does, and I get, lose the outline of the CDC. I shoot blind, which might have been a mistake, because I'm pretty sure I could have killed the Yakbanzu there and then and there, but uh, uh, I wanted to get to shoot that CDC as well as he is most likely to be paying attention to me as well. Uh, get the shot on the Yakbanzu, finally we killed that camper, and now... Uh, for the CDC and the lightweight, I mean, I don't really want to go in there and fuck with them too much as the uh, Ice Force and Eason E5 might be closing in on us. Uh, I will get this one shot on the light tank for sure though, and finally we actually managed to pen him. And now, I haven't been paying attention too much to what's happening behind me. I know that the Ice Force are definitely going to win that fight, but I'm not sure about their health pool. And here's some OP spotting mechanics. Uh, means that the light tank disappears right in front of me. It didn't really matter as I was still reloading, but still a bit awkward. Going for a shot maybe on the lightweight, maybe on the RD, we'll see what happens. Not really pre-aiming this very well, so the light tank gets uh, to slip away, but I will aim at the RD here and should be a pretty easy shot to land. And we do exactly that. So now facing the harsh reality back at this flank, Eastern E5 200 health, not that dangerous. I mean, still taking one shot from this guy would put me uh, really low on health so I don't really want to fuck with him when he's held down like that so I'm just gonna leave and let him do something else. The Ice Force are both on pretty much full health which is ridiculously bad for me so I actually have to uh, put some more distance between myself and the Ice Force in order to uh, stand a chance of living longer than around 20 seconds when I get spotted so I am going to do exactly that. Um, uh, T32 obviously dies, he didn't really stand a chance. This T44 could still play a really big role in this game if he plays just passive and does not peek too much and does not die, but uh, as he is a T44 on top of the hill, it's a bit unlikely to, that that's going to be the way that things are going to pan out. And now just peeking to see if I can find the second ice for... Uh, it would be really nice to get a shot in for free here. He lost some health to the RD as well, so not only on 1000 health, that's not too bad, but the T44 almost buries this, uh, the chances for us to win this game by uh, dying to the Ice 4. That's really bad play from the guy. He should have just sat and been really passive and spotted everyone's like 30 seconds, but he instead just died. And now, this shot is pretty poorly aimed and it hits the side of the turret there, uh, but you know, Russian side armor, bro, go fuck yourself also. So in order to stay alive, I cannot 1v1 an IS-4 on the same amount of health. It's like, I could in theory, he needs to make a major fuck up and I don't really want to rely on my enemies having a major fuck up uh, within like 100 meters. It's quite obvious that the IS-4 that was uh, closer to me was, uh, was probably going to try to go for me. And now I'm peeking on this side. This might be a bit bad because of the East and E5 and where he went. My view range is decent enough to not feel threatened here, but you know, you never know. The East and E5 might be sitting in a bush or something. Might be able to get a shot into this IS-4 once again. He is starting the cap, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna leave as he understands that the Yakbenzer is gonna cap faster. And now, uh, just wondering where the IS-4 went. He didn't, uh, he probably went uh, this way and uh, went down to try to reset the cap. That's most likely what happened. The East and E5 does spot our Yakbenzer. My shot on him is pretty terrible, but the Yakbenzer manages to kill him. He takes a shot in return though, so he is now uh, one shot for sure. Now we clearly know that the, one of the Ice Force uh, is coming from our cap circle on the 1-2 line and the other Ice Force most likely either on top of this hill or he went on the bottom. We're gonna check out the bottom first as we cannot see anything here and then we're gonna peek on the top because it's pretty uh, damn likely that he's gonna be like H and J line. Uh, we should get a really good crossfire here, it's extremely important here as well and there he is. Uh, Trying to nail this shot and do damage and track him, but I didn't aim it fully. I didn't really want to get shot back and uh, I knew need to fall back for quite a while in order uh, for him to not be able to shoot me. And uh, now he is still peeking at the Yakpanzer and I do get to shoot him in the ass, set him on fire. Uh, he shoots the Yakpanzer with HE, he doesn't kill him. Uh, and I will have another shot here for sure. Uh, Ice 4 is turning towards me, but... Uh, he shouldn't be able to reload in time and now our Yakbanzer finishes him off. Now it's really likely this, that this IS-4 will not try to get into the same crossfire as his friend did and he is coming right after me and loaded full heat uh, because you know, fuck uh, nerves and, and aiming. You just load heat and auto-aim because you know, it's this game is too hard. And now uh, 
my only job really is to keep that ice for um, like make him come over this ridge and let the Yakmans shoot him and uh, I will try to do the best I can. I'm not really sure how well he can see my cupolas with the Chinese tanks. It's like if you have gun depression, your enemies could almost always see the top of my cupolas. And having him to be like sitting still and aiming at me like that is also like a bit nerve wracking because it looks like he can shoot me. It will matter a lot if I get shot once for free here because uh, for me to go over the ridge and actually get gun depression to shoot him will cost me a good bunch of time so I'll probably get shot for that and here's the first Jack Benzi fuck up a shot into the fu fucking flat uh, uh, front it does not do anything the Jack manages to fuck off in time though if the IS-4 dropped here we would have won this game here and now but he is not that stupid but not far from it, I guess. And now just aiming for the top of the turret again. Not, no luck for me here. Uh, running out of ammo and he's now going for me. Yakpanzer yeah, fucks up the second shot. Hits top uh, top part of the top part of the hull instead of the instead of the track, and I have no real chance to survive this. I did uh, do my best to give that Yakpanzer yeah, the most shots he would ever get. He stops the cap here for no reason, which also pretty much throws the game away. And now. That was what, fourth, third, fourth shot that I gave the Yakpanzer for free, and he didn't manage to pen a single one of those. So I did my best to try to uh, win this game. This Yakpanzer uh, and his potato aim was a bit too much for me to carry, though. We're gonna speed up the game here because this is gonna take fucking two days now. The IS-4 is coming in for the Yakpanzer. Yakpanzer, if he just sat in the cap and didn't even bother to shoot the last shot and just capped, we would have won by cap. And... Uh, now it's all in the hands of the IS-4, and the IS-4 needs a massive fuck up if he uh, uh, if he throws this game. He needs to fuck up massively. First of all, Yakpanzi needs to roll high. Second of all, the IS-4 needs to be shitty enough to let the Yakpanzi even shoot him first. And guess what happens? There you go, boys. That's how you win Wall of Tanks. You cap with a Yakpanzer. And there's the end plate, 7605 damage done, 167 assisted, 30 shots fired, 23 hits, ace tanker, high caliber, and confederate. Uh, 1579 base experience and 4 kills as well. The game just uh, nicely indicates the strengths of the WZ, really nice alpha damage, really good uh, hull down potential, and the gun has pretty decent DPM for a high hitter at tier 9. Uh, we got kind of fucked over by our Yak Panzer, but somehow managed to win the game in the end as anyway. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay, and I'll see you on the next one.